South Holly Library presents Storytime with Miss Jennifer. For today's story time, I'll be reading the story of Johnny Town Mouse by Beatrix Potter. Then we're going to be decorating paper drums. Then we'll have the books of the week list. The Tale of Johnny Town Mouse by Beatrix Potter. Johnny Town Mouse was born in a cupboard. Timmy Willie was born in a garden. Timmy Willie was a little country mouse who went to town by mistake in a hamper. The gardener sent vegetables to town once a week by carrier. He packed them in a big hamper. The gardener left the hamper by the garden gate so the carrier could pick it up when he passed. Timmy Willie crept in through a hole in the wicker basket. And after eating some peas, Timmy Willie fell fast asleep. Timmy Willie awoke in a fright while the hamper was being lifted into the carrier's cart. Then there was a jolting and a clattering of horses' feet, and other packages were thrown in too. For miles and miles this went on. At last the cart stopped at a house, where the hamper was taken out, carried in, and set down. The back door banged, and the cart rumbled away. But there was no quiet. There seemed to be hundreds of carts passing. Dogs barked. Boys whistled in the street. And the birds were chirping loudly. The cook opened the hamper and began to unpack the vegetables. Timmy Willie, who had lived all his life in a garden, was very scared. Out jumped Timmy Willie out of the basket. Up jumped the cook on a chair, exclaiming, A mouse! A mouse! Call the cat! Timmy Willie did not wait. He rushed along the floor till he came to a little hole and jumped in. Timmy Willie dropped half a foot and crashed into the middle of a mouse dinner party. Who is this? inquired Johnny Town Mouse. Johnny Town Mouse introduced Timmy Willie to nine other mice, all with long tails and white neckties. The dinner was eight courses, not much of anything, but truly elegant. All the dishes were unknown to Timmy Willie, who would have been a little afraid of tasting them. The noise upstairs made him so nervous that he dropped a plate. Never mind, said Johnny Town Mouse. Why don't you two come back with the dessert, said Johnny Town Mouse, pointing at the two young mice. They went upstairs to the kitchen between courses. Several times they had come tumbling in, squeaking and laughing. Timmy Willie learned that they were being chased by the cat. Timmy Willie wasn't hungry after he heard that. Are you not hungry anymore? No. Would you rather go to bed? asked Johnny Town Mouse. I will show you a most comfortable sofa pillow. The sofa pillow had a hole in it, and Johnny Town Mouse recommended it as the best bed they kept for visitors. But the sofa smelt of the cat, and Timmy Willie preferred to sleep the night on the floor. It was just the same the next day. An excellent breakfast was provided. Johnny Town Mouse and his friends made loud noises under the floors and came boldly out of the house in the evening. One particular loud crash had been caused by someone tumbling downstairs with a tree with the tea tray. There were crumbs and sugar and smears of jam to be collected in spite of the cat. Timmy Willie longed to be at home in his peaceful garden. The food disagreed with him and the noise prevented him from sleeping at night. Johnny Town Mouse listened to Timmy Willie's story about home. It sounds rather a dull place. What do you do when it rains? When it rains... I sit in my little sandy burrow and shell corn and seeds from the autumn store. I peep out at the birds on the lawn, and my friend Robin comes to visit. And when the sun comes out again, you should see my garden and the flowers, the roses and the pinks. No noise except the birds and the bees and the lambs in the meadows. It's a wonderful place. Just then they heard a loud crash. There goes that cat again, said Johnny. Let's go into the cellar. 
when they got to the cellar, Johnny said, I confess, I'm a little disappointed you don't like it here. Oh, yes, yes, you have been most kind, said Timmy Willie, but I do miss home. Then Johnny said, perhaps it might be wiser for you to return the hamper. Oh, really, cried Timmy Willie. Johnny said, did you not know that the hamper goes back empty on Saturdays? No, I did not know that, said Timmy. So Timmy Willie said goodbye to his new friends and hid in the hamper with a crumb of cake and a withered cabbage leaf. And after much jolting, he was set down safely in his own garden. Sometimes on Saturdays, Timmy Willie went to look at the hamper lying by the gate, but he knew better than to get inside again, and nobody got out, although Johnny Townmouse had promised to visit. Timmy Willie sat by his burrow, warming his little fur coat and sniffing the smells of violets and spring grass. Timmy Willie had nearly forgotten his visit to town, when up the sandy path came Johnny Townmouse. Timmy Willie received him with open arms. You have come at the best time of year. Hi, he said. It's a little damp. Johnny Townmouse, who was carrying his tail under his arm and out of the mud. What is that fearful noise? said Johnny Townmouse. That, said Timmy Willie, that is only a cow. I will ask for a little milk. They are quite harmless. What is that noise? said Johnny Town Mouse. That is a lawnmower. I will fetch some of the grass clippings to make your bed. I am sure you will settle right in in the country with me, said Timmy Willie. Hmm, we shall see, said Johnny. I am sure you will never want to go to town again, said Timmy Willie. But Johnny did. He went back in the very next hamper of vegetables. He said it was too quiet. One place suits one person, another place suits another person. For my part, I prefer to live in the country, like Timmy Willie. The end. For today's craft, we're going to be decorating paper drums. Kits are located at the South Holiday Library. The kits will include an already assembled drum, some stickers, and decorations. For this craft, just decorate the drum with the included stickers and decorations. You may also use crayons and markers. To use a drum, hold the drum by the handle and twist the drum back and forth. The beads are going to be hitting the sides of the drum. Did you decorate a drum? Bring it to the library and we'll take a picture. Books of the Week are available at the South Holiday Library.